Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. If this is your first time here, my name is Jody and I love watches. And I love giving a watch or watch brand that deserves it a bit of a kicking occasionally. If that sounds like fun to you, you should subscribe by hitting the big button that says subscribe on it. Now, this is a roast with a difference today because I don't actually have the watch. I've never actually seen the watch, so I'm roasting this one sight unseen. That's how confident I am that the watch and the marketing campaign around it are complete bullshit. The watch is called the Guardian and it was launched around 12 months ago by a Danish brand called Nordgreen. Its USP is that Nordgreen claimed to have created the most environmentally friendly watch possible. And boy, do they love to spam you with social media ads backing up their bold claim as soon as you show any interest in the product. So be warned. The biggest claim of all is that this watch comes with a 100 year warranty. You heard me right. A company that has been in business now for uh, six years is offering an automatic watch with a 100 year warranty. Stick around folks, this one is going to be fun. Now, let me be clear before I go on. I'm not a nutter here, I'm not telling you to club a seal or chop down the tree in your back garden, quite the opposite. More brands should think holistically about their end-to-end -end environmental impact, and more consumers should think holistically about the environmental impact of the products that they consume. So in theory I approve, but what about the watch? Before I get to the watch, let's have a bit of a look at Nordgreen as a brand. Like I said, they've been around now since 2017. They're based in Denmark and all of their marketing collateral features this gentleman. Apparently he used to design things for Bang & Olufsen, everybody's favorite Scandinavian electronics manufacturer. Now, full disclosure, I do have a bit of history with Nordgreen. I haven't actually reviewed any of their watches on the channel, but that's not for lack of trying on their part. Someone called Nico first contacted me in late 2017, told me they'd spent 20 minutes flicking through something or other and asked me if I'd be interested in cooperating with them. I spent far less than 20 minutes looking at their watches and didn't even respond to the email. Undeterred, I got a second email from Christopher the following year, 2018. Now their email focus was on Mr. Bang & Olufsen and on their giving back program. This time I did reply, commending their social responsibility program, but declining the chance to review their watches. Undeterred, Babar contacted me a couple of months later. I did not reply. Undeterred, Christopher contacted me again in March of 2019 looking for advertising. I informed him of his double handling and wished them all the best once more. Undeterred, Alexander contacted me the next month. This time they were looking for brand ambassadors. My patience was clearly wearing thin at this point because I informed him that I did not think his poorly specified and overpriced watches were suitable for review. Saucer of milk for Jody. Say it with me. Undeterred, I got an email from Sam a couple of weeks later, this time inviting me to join their affiliate program. I don't know why I'm wasting my time bothering with these people, I clearly just wanted them to stop sending me emails. Undeterred, Monica contacted me in December of 2019 and I replied accusing them of spamming. What do you think happened next? Yes, of course, Stellina contacted me in late 2020 again. And they haven't stopped sending me emails either. I counted no less than five last year and one so far this year. Make no mistake, Nordgreen are not in the business of saving the planet. They are in the business of selling watches. And if you have 7,000 followers or more on Instagram, they will send you a watch for free and give you a discount code for your followers that gets you a percentage commission. A quick look on Instagram reveals hundreds of people who took them up on that offer all around the world from France to Japan to the UK. Hey, look, there's nothing wrong with getting some free stuff and trying to make a living out of it, so long as you declare it properly and some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them clearly need a few lessons in how to wear watches. This nice young lady has got her Norgreen on back to front. But what of the watches, Jody? I hear you cry. Well, let's have a look at Norgreen's bread and butter. The watches that you too could get for free if you have 7,000 Instagram followers. So this is what the man who used to design Bang & Olufsen has come up with. How many times have we seen this before? But wait, they even try and dress up this design by saying, the hour marks of three and nine are gently prolonged, evoking an understated feeling of serenity. What the fuck? Cheap quartz shite. 
Scandinavian spaghetti scametti, if you will, that cost less than five bucks to make in China. No wonder they can afford to give back to children's charities or whatever, they are making a fortune on this garbage. Now, there is clearly a place for this stuff in the market because they've sold a bucket load of them. I'm sure Mr. Bang & Olufsen has now got a really nice house to go along with his really nice stereo system, but you can see why I declined their numerous overtures. Their watches are just trash. But what of the Guardian then, their new sustainable watch with a 100 year warranty? What does it look like? Well, it looks pretty much the same as all of their other watches. Scandinavian minimalism. Look, again, no problem if that's what you're into, but these are like 700 US dollars for a reasonable but unspectacular set of specifications, including flat sapphire crystal, 100 meters of water resistance, integrated bracelet, and a Miota 9039. Now, if you don't have a clue about watches, that all sounds quite impressive, but no one watching this channel is gonna be fooled into thinking that that lot is worth 700 US. You can easily find all of those specs for about half of the money that Nordgreen are charging. Now, so that you don't have to, I spent half an hour reading their white paper, the environmental impact statement that they used while researching the holistic impact of the Guardian. They take nearly 20 pages to describe the decision-making processes that led to the components chosen for the watch. With industry experts offering their advice as to how long certain components would last based on their own experience. These industry experts seemingly think that mineral crystal lasts only two years and sapphire crystal lasts only five years and leather straps last only one year. I got the distinct feeling reading this that the decisions had been taken a long time ago and all this document was for was to create a convincing narrative to accompany the watch that had already been designed. Honestly, there is very little here that every single person watching this video wouldn't be able to say with a fair degree of confidence right now with zero research. In fact, the only single specific genuinely environmentally impactful decision taken in the componentry of the Guardian is the use of 85% recycled stainless steel for the case and the bracelet. Everything else is utterly standard. And in fact, I would seriously question their use of an integrated bracelet if they are concerned about genuinely having these watches in use for decades. The pins holding it all together are gonna to be a weak point and a weak point that is not likely to be user serviceable. A genuinely more environmentally friendly solution would have been to have had standard lugs so that when the bracelet does break, the user can then fit an alternative strap or bracelet of their choice. So much ado about nothing then really. And what of this warranty? Well, as intimated, I'm not sure how useful a 100 year warranty is from a brand that's only been around for six years. I sent Nordgreen inquiries asking about the specific details and they basically sent me back the generic information that's on their website. It's a 100 year warranty, but it's only valid if you keep the receipt for 100 years, so make sure you don't put it in a drawer and forget about it. And it's only valid if the watch is serviced every five years by Nordgreen. And crucially, it doesn't cover wear and tear. So if in say 75 years time, the butterfly class breaks and Nordgreen are actually still in business and you can find the receipt, it's unlikely to be covered by the warranty anyway. Good old Neil van der Plug, he points out the ridiculous of this in a comment on the warranty page. So where does this leave us then? Well, it leaves us with a very ordinary, overpriced, Chinese-made, Scandinavian minimalist watch with a warranty that doesn't appear to be worth the recycled paper it's written on. A watch made by virtue signalers for virtue signalers. Now, as much as it pains me to say this with a channel name like this one, the most environmentally friendly watch you can buy is the one you've already bought. Or it isn't a watch at all, it's your phone, on the basis that a phone is now an essential, so a secondary time-telling device like a watch is now a luxury. So, if you want to save the planet, don't buy a Nordgreen Guardian. In fact, if you want to save the planet, don't buy a watch at all. That hurt. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you for making it all the way to the back end of the video. If you want to watch me tear strips off an ugly boulevard, click here, or have a good laugh at 10 brands with truly awful names, click here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.